Welcome to Electron Online and here's our next example of how to find the maximum min values of a function. Here a function is a fourth order function, 3x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. So again, we're going to find the derivative, so we can then set it equal to zero, and find the places where the slope will be equal to zero. Those are the critical points of the function. So f prime of x is equal to 12x cubed minus 12x squared. And so now to find those critical points, we set the derivative equal to zero because we want to find out where the slope is equal to zero. So for what value is x? So set f prime of x is equal to zero. So, or set f prime of x equal to zero. Zero equals 12x cubed minus 12x squared. Here you can see that you can factor out a 12 from the right side, divide both sides by 12, and we end up with zero equals x cubed minus x squared. We can factor out an x squared, so zero equals x squared times x minus one. And of course, when we multiply two things together and we get zero, that means either x squared is equal to zero or x minus one is equal to zero, which means x equals zero or x equals one. So for those two values of x, we have a critical point. We know there the slope will be equal to zero. So to find out where those two points are on the graph, we need to plug those back into the original function to find the corresponding y values. So first of all, let's try zero. So f when x is equal to zero is equal to zero minus zero, which is zero. So our first point is zero, zero. The second point, f of x is equal to one is equal to, when we plug a one in here, we get three times one to the fourth minus four times one cubed. That would be three minus four, which is equal to negative one. So the two critical points are the point zero, zero and the point one, negative one. So let's put those on the graph and see what it looks like. The first critical point, zero, zero. We know that the slope there must be zero. How do we know that? Because that's where the derivative is equal to zero. All right, so that's our first point. We know the slope is zero. And the next point would be one, negative one. So when x equals one, y equals negative one. So this point right there, and we know the slope there is zero as well. So what does this function look like? We know that at those two points, those critical points, the slope is equal to zero. All right. In order to figure out what that function looks like, we're going to we're going to uh, put a uh, we're going to substitute a point to the left in between and to the right of those two critical points in the first derivative because that's how we find what the slope will be to the left in between and to the right of those two critical points, which gives us a good idea what the function should look like. So we take our derivative f prime of x and we substitute in first a value to the left. So since this is 0, we're going to plug in x equals negative 1. And here's our derivative. Might as well box that in so we know what we're doing here. We have 12 times negative 1 cubed minus 12 times negative 1. And that would be squared. So that would be equal to negative 1 times 12, which is uh, negative 12. And that's negative 1 squared is positive 1. That would be minus 12, which is minus 24. It's negative. We don't really need to know the exact values, realizing that the derivative is negative when x equals negative 1. So to the left, see, x equals negative 1 is over here. So to the left of that critical point, the slope is negative, which means the function is decreasing. So we expect to see something like this to the left of that point. What happens in between the two points? Let's say if this is x equals 1, so let's try a point x equals 1 half in between 0 and 1. So f prime of x equals 1 half is equal to 12 times 1 half cubed. And that would be a positive 1 half, right? Minus 12 times 1 half squared. 1 half cubed is 1 eighth times 12 is 12 eighths minus 1 half squared is uh, 1 fourth. 12 divided by 1 fourth is 3. So it would be um, minus 3. And 3 is bigger than 12 eighths, so that would be a negative number. It is smaller than 0. See, I don't really even need to know what the exact value is. It's actually minus 1 half. We just can realize that this is bigger than this, the magnitude of it. And since it's negative and that's positive, you know the value is going to be less than 0. 
less than zero means the slope is negative that means the function is decreasing so in between those two points the function is decreasing as well finally we take a point to the right so let's take the point x equals 2 so f prime and x equals 2 we're going to evaluate the derivative to the right of that critical point that second critical point to see if the slope is positive or negative to see if the function is either increasing or decreasing so we have 12 times 2 cubed minus 12 times 2 squared. So that's 8 times 12 is 96 minus 4 times 12 is 48. That is equal to 48, which means it's greater than 0. There we find that the slope is positive, which means that the function is increasing. So we can say that over here to the right of the second critical point, the function is increasing. So what must this function look like? We see here that the slope is 0. The slope here is zero, the function here is decreasing, the function is decreased, and the function is increasing, so it probably looks something like this. Comes down here, the slope becomes zero, then it turns this way again, and the slope becomes zero again, and then here the function is increasing, so it probably looks something like that. Two critical points, one at zero, zero, and this one here at minus one, and minus one, I believe, right? Uh, no, one minus one, sorry. 1 minus 1 for the second point. Now, this here is an absolute maximum. It's the very lowest point on the graph. Over here, that's kind of an interesting point. The function is decreasing, but the decrease becomes less and less severe, and eventually the slope becomes zero, but then the function continues to decrease. So it's not really a minimum value, because for this to be a local minimum, we would expect the slope to become uh, positive here, we expect this function to be increasing on this side. So this is not a max or a min, it's actually an inflection point. And we'll talk about inflection points at some later video. The only max min value is this one over here. It's a minimum value and it's the absolute minimum value because it's the lowest point on the graph. The maximum point on the graph, of course, will be infinity because if you allow the graph to go on infinitely high here, if the x value is increased to the right or to the left, you can see that the function will become infinitely large. So that's our only interesting critical point when we're looking for max min values. In this case, it is an absolute, an absolute minimum value. And that's how we do that.